This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus motion system. This is by far the biggest, the baddest, the most expensive piece of hardware that we've ever been able to review here in our studio. The Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus is a sliding motion platform designed to not only hold an entire Sim chassis, but also slide both the front and back end of the chassis, left and right, independently, based on game-driven physics. This is a similar type of motion as what we have seen from full-size hundreds of thousands or million-dollar variations of a sliding motion system from the likes of McLaren or Porsche, but this one in a pint-sized, somewhat affordable variation. Now, I can't even explain how this actually operates until I touch upon the fact of how it fits into the Next Level Racing ecosystem. In the past, I've reviewed a variety of Next Level products, everywhere from wheel stands and sim chassis for the beginner, all the way up to chassis built for the hardcore sim racers like the GT Track. In addition to that, fairly recently, we did review the Motion Platform, the seat mover from Next Level Racing that was specifically designed to be used with the GT Track sim chassis. And now we look at a product that is designed to take the GT Track, whether it's fully loaded with the seat mover or on its own and turn it into a whole new variation on a motion system or a motion platform. And I think now you can start to see what I mean by an entire ecosystem from Next Level Racing. So you can watch those previous reviews that take us to this point in time, the GT Track review from March of 2019, or the Motion Platform, AKA the Seat Mover V3 from back in August of 2018. And that would help you understand the entire package. But for me, it was a video that came out in June 2019 when I got to try out this entire package at E3 2019. When testing this out in those trade show circumstances, I got a taste for the potential of what this rig could really output or provide. But I really wanted a chance to test it out more long term, dial in the settings for me for racing, versus the shock and awe or the overdramatic settings that you'll typically find from a motion company at a trade show. So for me, it was all about getting this chassis to the studio, getting to take enough time to drive it, tune it in, dial it in, and really find the peak performance of a motion platform like this and really get to know it well before doing a full review. And what do you know? We have it, we've had it, we've been able to take that time with it, and now we're here to do the full review. And luckily, we happen to have a GT track with the seat mover already installed for the full blown version. But for today's vote video, we will focus on the platform itself. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus and see how it all works. As I mentioned, it's a slider system that holds the entire rig and then can slide the front and back separately back and forth or left and right. The platform is made up of three main parts. There's the front slide section that encompasses two different sliding rails. There is then a rear section with another two sliding rails for the rear. And then finally, the middle section that joins the two together as well as holds the brain and power supply of the unit. When put together, the Traction Platform Plus has a pretty large footprint and measures in at 44 inches or 112 centimeters wide by 65 inches or 165 centimeters long and about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters tall. The sliding sections are made of a box-shaped metal housing with two sliders per section. These sliders then support a deck between them and that deck will move left and right up to about 10 inches or 25 centimeters. On top of the deck is a pivoting mount intended to hold the GT Track Sim chassis and then allows the entire chassis to pivot left and right. When you look inside the slit or opening that allows the deck to slide, you can see it moves along plastic wheels and metal bearings fitted to a steel bar. It sort of moves along that rail, much like a roller coaster holds its rails, allowing for fast and smooth operation. Within both of these box structures and emitting from that slit is RGB lighting that you can adjust to fit the mood of your gaming room. As I mentioned, the middle section holds the electronics as well as acts as the joining member between the front and back halves of the rig. It holds each section to the middle via four small bolts and also accepts a USB cable to the computer 
as well as the power cord. The Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus is large and it is also very heavy or quite substantial. In fact, its weight is the hardest part of putting it together or installing it or even receiving the unit when it gets shipped to you. In total, it weighs about 240 pounds and is broken into the three main parts. The front and back sections weighing about 100 pounds each with the middle making up that difference. To put it together, you will need a large space, as I mentioned, as it takes that 44 by 65 inch footprint, and that doesn't include your monitors. This took up about twice the amount of space as my standard rig. Putting the three sections together is pretty easy as well. It's literally only four bolts per side to hold the ends to the middle section. Each end also has a communication wire to plug into the middle and then you plug the power supply into the wall and finally the USB cable into the computer. That's all it takes on the platform end. It's actually very, very simple, just a little bit heavy. Then you need to add a rig. Now the GT track is the rig that it is designed to work with and that rig is gonna set you back another $900. So you have to take that into account when pricing this or when trying to figure out how to use another rig. Now in my case, again, I have a GT track. It already has the seat mover on it, so we'd be able to test it in that ultimate experience, but that would raise the cost another $3,000 for the seat mover, or in my case, I was even gonna put the Sim Experience G seat on top of that and raise the cost even more. Now for this review, I am gonna keep things focused on just the platform, and then in a future review, we'll do something on the ultimate driving experience. With or without the motion seat for today, I will assume that you already have a fully ready to go GT track chassis just like I did, as that is the chassis this is designed to work with. The GT track will bolt directly to the Next Level Racing Platform Plus. The chassis lines up with the mounting holes and using the supplied hardware, we just bolt the rig to the front mount with four bolts and then bolt the rig to the rear mount with an additional six more bolts. And that's just about it. We can already start sliding the chassis left and right. We're just waiting on power and a computer signal. As I've mentioned, the Traction Platform Plus is designed to work with the GT Track chassis right out of the box, and that's what we've already installed. And I've heard rumors that someday there might be adapters for other chassis, but as of now, none of them exist. Now, if I wanted to mount my RC or an 8020 or profile extrusion tubing chassis to this, I think I could. I just need to build some kind of adapter and make the rig mount, and I think it'd be fairly easy overall. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the overall capacity, the total weight of the driver and chassis can only be 235 kilograms or 518 pounds, which actually is a fair amount. The GT Track is a fairly light chassis, so when adding a heavier chassis, it might reduce the total volume or total capacity of the driver size. But with 518 pounds, you have a fair amount of overhead to work with. So with the platform ready to go and the rig installed on top of it, it takes us to our first hurdle or consideration or obstacle, something, a challenge that we're gonna have to overcome. And that being monitors. What are you gonna do about monitors? With 10 inches of left and right travel, this massive amount of travels, what are you gonna do about monitors? Are you just gonna hang a single screen? It would have to be right directly in your face. I tried that, it's unacceptable. And when I consider the width of a 49 inch widescreen or triple 27 inch monitor setup like my normal rig at 53 inches wide, the amount of left to right movement of the rig seems very extreme when compared to the small span of conventional triples. And this breaks the visual effect. It breaks the immersion. It removes or downgrades the realism that we're trying to achieve by having a motion system to begin with. So it really only leaves us with two different options. Giant triple screens, which I tested at E3, but that comes at a giant cost and even more space allocated to the rig. And if giant monitors are done on the cheap, let's face it, it's gonna be an inferior driving experience and certainly not built for the hardcore. So for me, it was VR to the rescue. It was VR that would provide the best driving experience and the best environment for this motion platform and its massive amount of travel to be enjoyed. And it is the way that I did a majority of my testing, mainly because it's the way I enjoyed it the most. 
The next step would be installing the software for the Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus, which is as easy as anything else coming from Next Level Racing. You go to their website, you download the software, you install it on your computer, and then you let it recognize your gear. It will also see all of your compatible games and build profiles for you into the user interface. At this point, you can pretty much fire up any game and your motion should come to life. So before I even get to talking about the driving experience with the Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus, I wanna talk about the footage that you're gonna see during the driving. I tried this platform in a bunch of different scenarios. As I mentioned, I have the seat mover. As I mentioned, I have the G seat from Sim Experience. I tried it out with that full package. I tried a variety of different monitor configurations until I settled on VR, but all of that buildup, all of that testing was part of my testing the rig, part of the timing that I was tuning in the settings for each game that I was driving it in, getting it set up for the VR experience and all the other ways that I drove the chassis. But when I first started driving the Traction Platform Plus, I was immediately struck by how smooth the movement was. It was a combination of the rollers and their smoothness combined with the entire chassis being moved, which is refreshing compared to the seat mover type motion systems that I've tested. The car's movement of left and right are being felt in every way. G-force load effects combined with the slightest of traction loss by the tires, which happens at the minimal level as soon as the wheel is turned and the car is moving. At those moments, there's a slightest hint of left and right movement out of the platform that increases with intensity with speed and even more so with cornering. And that is when the traction platform really comes to life or goes wild. So how do I best describe what is going on here and then take it back to the action for you? I mean, I think it's very important for you to actually understand what's going on with the movement of the Traction Platform Plus. So here it is. Here's my best description of what's going on. As you're going down the straight, the Traction Platform is most static. And as the corner came up, if you hit the braking speed perfectly and the car went in the corner well balanced, the traction platform would deliver you mostly G-load, and this would slide the entire chassis front and rear a bit to the opposite direction of the corner, G-forces. And if at any moment the front wheels start to slide out or lose grip or suffer from understeer, the front side of the traction platform would move even more, giving you the sensation of the front end washing out or if the front wheel started to really dig in, you would feel the front end pull in just a touch as well. On the flip side, should it be the rear end washing out, sliding around, or an oversteer condition is happening, it is the rear end of the chassis that will start to move extra and give you the rear end movement feeling in the seat of your pants. And what is most amazing about this is just how smooth the movement is while all of this is going on. Now I did find that some cars provided more of a wild ride than others and this is mainly affected by the amount of grip or traction that the cars actually possessed. On cars with high amounts of grip, you could almost tell when you were overdriving the car by how much activity the machine was producing. And I found the smoother I drove, the smoother the platform would be. This also translated into feeling that way on my fastest laps in that car. While on the other hand, in other cars like rally cross or off-road tracks, there would be no driving around or smooth around the motion. It was gonna be very noticeable and very extreme with massive suspension hits and the massive counter steering followed by losing traction on every corner, both front and rear, the platform is always at full response and delivering many sensations all at once. In the case of rally cars and off-road trucks, I actually felt a sensation that no motion system has ever delivered quite as nicely. That feeling of the front end of the car completely washing out. So you're going into the corner, you turn in, the car sets nicely, and then in the rally cars, your front end starts to slide out from being a little too fast into the corner. And the Traction Platform Plus immediately delivers that feeling. The front end just washing out from underneath you. 
and it was distinctly a case of being way over speed into the corner. So I continued driving on, at first focusing a bit too much attention on the movement and not enough attention on the road. This actually had its advantages as I was missing my marks and forcing the traction platform to its extremes. And despite its smoothness, the default settings were definitely in a typical to motion sim company profile and way, way too much motion for me. In a carnival thrill ride, shock and awe, make sure you are getting what you paid for manner. The car, or better stated, my sim, would way over dramatically sway back and forth if I fishtailed the car off the corner. This was way beyond the sensations of a real car and it actually pointed out a hint of delay or a slightly slow transition speed in extreme left to right transitions from the motion platform. Now, luckily, I felt like this was something that I could dial in or tune out in the settings or the profile for the game, so it was time to do a little work on the software. Now, luckily, I have some experience with the next level racing software from my previous reviews, and luckily, it is one of the easiest softwares to use. I mean, you install the thing, it does its own firmware, it does its own updates, it it does everything and then you just need to tune your profiles. So when opening up my profile for the game, I'm adjusting the oversteer and understeer section when clicked on the right hand side. Each game has its own profile tab and you can make changes for each one. So I dial back the settings one by one or I can just turn the whole thing down. But I took the time setting by setting, making adjustments until I got the movement, the reactions, and the speed that I was looking for. It took some trial and error, and my settings ended up being somewhere between 40 to 60% of the default settings. Then it was time to get back on track. So with settings more tailored to racing or to represent a real race car or the feelings that I just felt that it should be delivering, the traction platform was a completely different device. While it was smooth before, it was way too much and to the point of distraction. And now the feelings are more subtle and better timed with the sim. The over the top motion actually created a condition that made the movements feel slightly delayed. With them turned down, those extremes aren't as far apart and the reaction time in the platform seems faster. Another part of dialing in the rig was dialing in VR. The next level racing software has an offset built into it to account for motion and VR being used together. You actually calculate your head position and feed that into the software and get to driving. I found that driving in VR made this setup so much better. It removed the issues of needing massive monitors and the costs associated with that. It removed the visual issue of seeing the chassis moving in the room, seeing the chassis moving versus the monitors while they're not moving, and all of that breaks the immersion. It also masked any sound the machine made and allows your brain to really settle into the experience. This made the platform's timing and speed feel more in sync with my driving and made the amount of motion feel more natural to the car's movements. It was by far my favorite way to drive the next level racing traction platform. Now we are in the car. Now we are feeling those G's. And now we are fully aware of the car's traction and lateral movements on the track. Driving in VR really brought out the best aspects of the Platform Plus. Everything felt a little bit smoother and more natural, and with the added immersion made the experience a real pleasure. Extremely fun and one of the best driving experiences one can have. The Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus also works with a wide variety of games, basically anything with motion output. So most modern sims, DCS, Flight Sim, they have motion output and it will work with this as well. That means I got a chance to fly Microsoft Flight Simulator on the platform as well and it is quite an experience. I did this also in VR and that took advantage of the same total immersion as it did with driving. Flying for the most part is smoother than driving and the transitions of the plane are generally slower than a car which allowed the Traction Platform Plus to also deliver a great flying experience. It took flight sim from fun 
to an over-the-top flying experience that not only looked like being in the plane, but started to deliver some of the feeling of being in the plane as well. For me in flight sims, I tend to overdo my rudder control. And the Traction Platform Plus made me far more sensitive to these movements and cleaned up my flying a little bit like it did my driving. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about the Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus motion system. In the future, I will do the full enchilada. I'm gonna put that seat mover on it. I'm gonna put my G seat on it. I've already tested it that way, but we'll do a full review or let you know what it is like to have the ultimate degree of freedom. I, I, I actually ran out of ones to count. There were too many degrees of freedom in doing that version with the G seat and everything else included. But I think as far as the straightforward platform plus only review, that tells you everything that you need to know. But just to make it perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being full motion in your house. Increased immersion. Extremely impressive hardware. Super duper fun best front end slip the only front end slip i've ever felt massive amount of travel great sensation of grip easy to set up considering what it is great software very easy to use tunable to your desire moves entire chassis less distraction than a seat mover incredible VR experience. And now on to the not so good, starting with that it is designed to work with only the GT track. Can be adapted, weight limitations apply. Expensive, out of the price range for most sim racers. Hard to use with fixed monitors. Extra large triples will be okay. A little slow takes a large amount of space. Hard to accommodate keyboard and mouse. Wiring needs to be flexible or movable. And now on to my final thoughts. This is the most fun you can have in sim racing in your home at an affordable price. It's basically like having one of those big boy toys. It's like having a mini pint-sized version of the type of simulator that big-time Formula One and car companies have in your home. There's something really nice about the simplicity of a traction platform system versus most of the other type of motion systems that I've used. I mean, with the seat mover, you have that distraction where when the seat's moving around, the distance between you and the steering wheel is always changing. When you're trying to do delicate braking, and the seat is moving, that is also a distraction. With the all-in-one, everything moving, there's something a lot smoother about the movement than a seat mover, and that makes for a better motion system feeling for me. Again, less distracting, and again, probably the reason why companies like McLaren use that type of technology. Again, this one being in a pint size variation. Now, the monitors is still something that I can't quite get over. You do need to have monster-sized monitors like I tested at E3. Otherwise, the immersion factor is going to be immediately broken. And for me, I think even on the jumbo monitors, with this much movement, this thing does move a lot, that I actually need something even bigger than triple screens. Or again, my favorite use is definitely in VR. I almost feel like this was designed to be used in VR, and that is by far my favorite and its best application, but it does limit the amount of games that I can use it in compared to using it on fixed monitors, that's for sure. Now in the end, I do think that this thing is far more built for fun than it is for performance. And I'm not trying to take away from the performance aspects of a sim like that, but I think for a lot of hardcore sim racers, the whole concept of motion is still somewhat arguable. When you're talking to the best of the best elite eSports sim racers, I think motion is still something they're not exactly striving for. However, when you're talking about fun factor, when you're talking about immersion, when you're talking about other aspects of sim racing, it is the ultimate. I think for a lot of us that aren't at that elite level, it really is about fun. And something like this, having a pint-sized 
full motion system in your home is gonna be a big plus. It is for the ultimate game room. It is for the ultimate arcade experience. And in the end, it was super duper fun and it made for the ultimate second rig for a guy like me. Having a rig that was built for hardcore racing and a rig built for fun or for when friends come over. And then lastly, they really need those adapters. I mean, even the seat mover had the R seat adapters and they really do to make the need to make this more universal for other rigs out there. It'll go a long way for a lot of sim racers out there. So hopefully we'll hear about that in the future. And speaking of the future, we will have that episode where we put the seat mover back on it. We put the G seat back on it. I can't even count the amount of degrees of freedom that we're gonna have. We're gonna do it in VR for the most mind-blowing driving experience. I think you saw some of that footage in this review, but we're gonna talk about it in that future episode. So I really enjoyed the Traction Platform Plus. It was a blast to drive. I hope you enjoyed the review. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can find other reviews, hear about that ultimate experience in the future. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.